Hi everyone, Bart from HVN here. And as promised in my earlier Light Gloves video, I just wanted to make a quick HEMA gear review video on a very specific and unique item of gear that I've been using recently, and that is the Thok Undergloves. These fulfill a very specific role, and that is that they function as gloves that you put on underneath uh, some specific um, HEMA longsword gloves, chiefly among which the sparring glove. These are very good gloves, very protective. They are among the very first purpose-built, maybe the very first purpose-built uh, glove that was made to withstand longsword sparring. They've been very popular ever since they were introduced, uh, but they do have one specific requirement for use. You can't really just put them on like this on a bare hand and then expect them to function properly. Um, one, especially the older models had this, they are a little bit rough on the inside so that they can cause abrasions on the fingers uh, and that can cause blisters for to form on bare skin. So you need some sort of um, cloth barrier between your skin and the glove. Nowadays, they, have, they actually have porn on the inside and that's quite nice and soft, but there's also a second requirement for wearing an underglove and that is in a lot of tournaments and really in sparring as well. You want to not have bare skin showing anywhere in your body. Bare skin is a lot more fragile than cloth of any kind, not just 350 Newton, but any kind of cloth is a lot stronger than your skin and you prefer the cloth to be torn instead of your skin. Um, Blades burr, they can have some sharp edges, uh, stuff like that can cause injury if it's not covered. So that's why a lot of tournaments require you to have an underglove if you wear sparring gloves. Now there's a couple options here. The simplest option is to use something like what I have here. This is a very cheap, very thin, very simple uh, construction workers glove. Um, it's got rubber on the inside for extra grip, but on the other th side it's just thin, elastic, synthetic fabric. And that alone provides some protection from cuts and abrasions if you wear them under your sparring gloves. Um, so that is like base level. Second level is you could choose under gloves that also have some added padding. A lot of people like that. A lot of people use a thing called rig lizards. Uh, those are also construction gloves, but they are uh, a little more like high level. They have padding on them that provides protection from impact. I found something that is a little cheaper. These are from Action. They cost about three euros. They look terrible, but they do have rubber pads on them that one provides a more snug fit if your glove is a little big, which helps with control. Uh, but two, it also provides a little more impact protection, which is nice. But neither of these gloves actually provides true protection against thrusts. And uh, what I've seen over the last couple of years in long sword tournaments especially, is uh, people getting thrust between the fingers or in the webbing between the thumb and the forefinger, or even in the palm. And the point of the long sword, um, even if it was a thickened roll or spatulated point or whatever, um, actually penetrating or tearing the skin. And this was in conjunction with a glove like this, um, stretchy synthetic fabric. The, all, almost everybody these days uses these under their sparring gloves, but they do not really protect against thrusts. Um, Almost no gloves that I've found so far really provides protection against penetration, penetrating injuries. Except these, the Thok gloves. These are rated to 350 Newton and they are noticeably tougher and stronger. The fabric is still stretchy, but it's quite a bit thicker and it really feels tougher as well. Um, I bought these sometime last year. I've been using them in tournament and sparring ever since. I really enjoyed them. Um, and I've taken some really, really hard thrusts with various weapons on the palm of the hand. 
nothing happened. Uh, I couldn't even find the spot where it got hit by the thrust. Uh, my hand was fine, if a little bruised. Uh, the glove is still fine, uh, didn't get torn, didn't get punctured at all. It does its job. They're a little thicker, but uh, as with uh, padded gloves, that does provide a nice snug fit. Um, they are otherwise unpadded, so they are very mobile. They do not impede the use of the sparring glove itself at all. And they have some features that are a little bit interesting. Um, one, they have this rubberized coating on the inside of the hand, which just like the work gloves, provides some more gripping surface. Although, um, as you can tell, that's starting to come off with use, um, which isn't a big deal. I didn't buy them for the protect uh, for the nice grippy rubber surface. I bought them for the 350 Newton protectiveness. Um, they also have thinner surfaces on the fingertips and the thumb um, to provide a little more tactile sensation when gripping the sword. Uh, this is a very, very neat addition and really shows that these were made by someone who fences and who really put some thought into them. So props to that. Um, so yeah, I, I've been very happy with them so far. Um, they are slightly on the expensive side, uh, 75 euros for the pair. And I only say slightly on the expensive side when compared to other undergloves, which are um, like five to 10 euros a pair, maybe 45 if you want to go the rig lizard way. Um, but when compared to um, like Olympic fencing gloves, which are the only other 350 Newton rated gloves I could find, sometimes they're 350 Newton rated gloves, those can go up to 75, 80 euros as well, but that's for one glove, not pair. So. This is still a very economical solution to a very real problem. Not a lot of people talk about this, but getting thrust in the hand can be debil debilitating. Like if you have a puncture wound in your hand, you're out of you're out of the tournament. That sucks. So very useful. I haven't found a lot of other HEMA companies, um, any really, that came up with this solution. So I really like them. The only drawback that I found so far is. Um, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but they have started to abrade a bit here. And I think that's because if I go into certain grips, that's the bit that rubs the most. Right here. Which actually brings me to a fun little, like, almost gimmick that they put in this glove as well. They actually have hard, flexible protection here on the wrist, which is another part that the, the, the sparring gloves, that's one of the only few bits that the sparring gloves don't protect. Like the wrist is sometimes open and that's precisely a slashing cuts to the wrist here are protected now. But that might also be the reason why this is the bit that abrades the most because there's hard protection underneath and when it rubs up against the hard grip, it can cause some wear and tear as seen here. So, um, maybe rethink this if I were the designer of the glove, because even though this is a nice added protective bonus, is it, if it results in increased wear and tear on the glove, um, I would prefer longevity of the glove over that little bit added protectiveness. That's the only drawback that I've found on these gloves so far. I really like them otherwise. They're high quality, they're clearly well made, um, they're affordable, and uh, they offer a unique, added protective feature in a very important area. Like if you can't use your hands, you can't fence. So I would recommend getting a pair of these if you use sparring gloves. So that's all. Uh, I hope this was useful and hope to see you again in the next video. Thanks.